So here we go, Navi versus Tornado Energy. Navi on the defense first. Tornado is going to be approaching the attack. And Mojo, what is happening already? There is a huge push here by Tornado on upper cap, as we predicted. So all the budgets are going super aggressive. Maybe they will try actually to catch the spotter while left shy is actually pushing Inspire, maybe just to get that extra one or two kilometers per hour for him so he can pass. Already some damage done by Griffon, so there's spotting going there, pressure is on, and maybe I will be wrong, it will be a fast game after all. Triple cap has started here for Tornado Energy, 33 seconds left on that, left shot and Inspire now crossing over, let's see how much damage they take for this, so far none, the cap gets immediately abandoned as soon as the position is taken by Navi, and now we're back to... Uh, a more slow start, you could say. But they are already positioned, so we can rotate on another side. Maybe they will try to press through the corner where Annihilator is. And maybe, just maybe, they will just try to flush out the light tank for free. Because light tank is the biggest bane if you are attacking from some lower side. Now, with Navi pushed so far back, maybe they can send the spotter to proxy him and just take him out for free. This would be a huge advantage, because then they can send tier 9 batches down to cap. The entire lineup from Tornado Energy has been spotted, though. You can already see the rotation coming out from Strike and Anatolic. They are taking the northern side of the map here, and Tornado Energy has between now and 20 seconds before shi side shots will start coming in from the TVP. Look at this. This Apple Wow is trying to fan out where the light is, but there is still a fight already going on there. So Kiriloid is pretty much hugging his bush and hoping he will not get spotted that easily. Anatolic took some serious damage, but this is nothing decisive. This is pretty much even Steven so far. In the meantime, you can see Nesqui is now going to be the rotator here for the Tornado Energy lineup as he is moving back towards the north, but Strike will be joining the Anatolic. If he gets spotted here by near you, he doesn't. So they don't know that there's a batch out there as well. Nesqui needs to be careful on the way he approaches this because between the two of them, Anatolic and Strike, they can easily take down two batches. Yeah, there is there is uh, two batch, two medium tanks already there, but Anatolic is in reload. Timing will actually be of essence here. A lot can go wrong here on both sides. Strike has four shots remaining. Griffon taking some more damage here. Anatolic spots out Nesqui. This is important. This is very important to see. You can see that three shots remaining now. Griffon also trying to play safe. And so far, so good for Navi. They're holding on. Yeah, he HP is rather even, and Navi managed to recover from that initial rotation of Tornado, so the game is pretty much more stale now. Navi is controlling the only the upper part of the map, and the weakness in their defense is exactly Kirillod, who is spotted now. They located him. They didn't spot him. He's just getting blindshotted by Apple Wow. He but knows exactly where he they was. Realized. They realized. Great stuff there from Apple Wow, pinpointing Kirillod's position. Complete blindshot. Complete blindshot. And this shifts it heavily back into the favor of Tornado Energy, as they can now leave their E5s in position and just rotate if they want to. This is a perfect now for them, because as we said previously, they can do the rotation, but it doesn't look like they want to play even like that, because they know the position of the most of the tanks for Navi. It does look they actually want to pressure them and take some guys out. You can see here Inspire pushing forwards to try and help his buddy. He takes one shot of damage from the E5 servers now. 1v1ing with Yana Tolic. He should pick him up. There we go. Server claiming the second kill here. Removing Yana Tolic, the first tier 10 to go down. And Navi, it seems like they're crumbling in this round as now Inspire is pushing forwards to get a bit strike to try and make a difference here against Nesqui. But Strike's already getting clipped. Inspire is getting shot on the side. Look at the damage they're taking. Slide goes down towards near you. Inspire drops low as well. And this is great stuff here from Tornado Energy, who seem to be looking to pick up their first attacking round as Nesqui picks up Inspire, three left standing for Navi. This is a really great game for Tornado here because they outplayed Navi by far. Even outthought them from the start with the initial aggression and then rotations. They've actually shown maturity more than they've shown in the last game against Ding. Great stuff here from Tornado Energy. Now two tanks left standing for Navi. This is over. This is done. Strike here trying to take deal with Griffon, but he can and you could see frustration from Strike. Actual frustration already in the first round as left shot the last one standing. He'll be going down here any second towards the door and that's it. Tornado Energy pick up the first round and you could see Strike, he's already frustrated. Yeah, I would say so. Also, I don't think they will be smiling that much. With I doubt it. faces anymore. They will actually have to play for all the bucks. But now he's been here so many times, like they go one game down, two games down or so but they fight till the end. Like, you really have to fight them till the very last second if you want to win a team like that. So, a start, I would say, that was really needed 
for uh, Tornado and for us, because we want this to be a great match. And uh, this is something that would be a perfect opening. It was really aggressive, it was well thought. It was something that would even shake Navi, because Navi was here, step behind, all the time. Yeah, Navi indeed. The rotation in the beginning from Yanatolic was fine, but the server coming across that A-line and pretty much catching him out for free. Yes, he took the damage, but he took him down, and then Navi, Inspire and Strike, just driving straight into a crossfire. It was interesting, like, but the key is... Apple Wow. Apple Wow, yes. Catching off that light, as we mentioned several times before, a, a entire tactic was actually based upon that. That they will maybe catch someone on a corner, but if they don't, they will go for the light, and then they will play the map. So it was really good execution. Well, let's take a look at stats to wrap this loss, this first round up. Anatolic, their top damage, yes, but there's five Tornado Energy players after. Wow. <laughs> Talk about one-sided damage there. So not really enough by that one TVP. I mean, he did some damage, but it was more or less sporadic. It was not really focused. And also he ended up on really bad position in a kind of a hold-down position with TVP. And TVP has a pa paper armor. It's a really tall tank. So it's no wonder he died just that, like easy like that. Again, server keeping up the damage here. And then we see a lot of bad stuff. Kreloid zero damage, obviously. But the Rhino inspire her slide. This is not what you expect from these kind of players. Yeah, this is uh, really super bad. But Rhino six shots, zero damage. Inspirer also single shooter heavy, only one shot of damage. And they were pretty much flushed out for free because their mediums more or less abandoned failed. Them. Yep. So that's great stuff here from Tornado Energy. And now they'll be moving to the defense and they might be picking up the first map here. Yeah, it would be a great start for them and something that they need to hope for. Still, it's, as we said, Murovanka was really heavily defendable map before. But as we see now, with the aggressive enough approach, you can't deal with that. You can't deal with that. Like, it's only campy if you allow it to be. We're going to have to see if Navi can deal with that. Can they? Well, we will see. Very soon. Great utilization of the Tier 9 Bacha, though, with the extra damage on Apple WoW, clearing out the bushes, you know. A 3090 would not be able to do it that easily, and Kreloid could just trade with him, really. Yeah, he could do whatever, but it was not only him. I think it was all his, also side shots, but it didn't really matter. He would fall, anyways. That 3090 would fall. Once located, it's done. And when he's done, they lost like uh, three quarters of the map. Well, let's take a look at the second round lineups here. Object 430 version 2 coming out from Navi. This same lineup they played before, but Tornado Energy not changing it up either. Pretty much the same lineup, but as we know, on this map, you don't have to change much, you can just change your gameplay. Because this Object 430 can be used even on lower cap together with this Tier 9 Bachat, but those two Tier uh, 10 E5s, they're usually giveaway because they're super hard to play for the lower cap because their turrets always stick out and they're not really reliable then. Of course, maybe they have some play for that, but with this low amount of medium, I seriously doubt it. I'm really liking the... Uh both teams here going with the tier 9s, even on Moravanka defense. We've seen it work out on the attack. It can work on the defense as well. They don't have to stick to that traditional 1390 setup in the bushes. And that's the good thing here from Tornado Energy, adapting. Well, Navi did a tier 8 defense and look where he took them. To the graveyard? Pretty much. Pre so Tornado is playing super aggressive. And we've already said it will be like that, but... We'll find out in the second round here if they do the same thing. So Navi versus Tornado. Currently Tornado 1-0 up Navi on the attack here and already a very fast approach from them as well. Yeah, we can see all, all around uh, Murovanka is more or less focused if you know what you're doing about, uh, about the initial opening on that one cap. So they will not tip top the forest, they will not play anything, they will just go there and try to flush out the enemy. Nesqui already taking first shot. Nesqui already taking that shot. He, the same story as like against Ding. Now Cap has started 30 seconds here. I mean, they have to be careful because Tornado Energy is playing with a T57 and an E5. If they come to that corner, could be trouble for Navi. Look at the left shot's position. They didn't put him in a cap. They put him behind the building. So he's angling there and watching the corner. That's super important. And it is a big fight coming in now. Here they come. The entire lineup from Tornado Energy inspires the first focus here. He goes down. They keep pushing. But near you, he should be going down here any second server. Probably the next one to fall. But in the meantime, Nesqui is flanking. Apoa is flanking as well. They take down Slide. Strike and Anatolic. Anatolic is on reload. It's just Strike right now in the E5. And he's getting focused down. Nesqui is trying to do what he can. But he 
only has one more shot available, so Strike will survive for now. But still, Tornado Energy by far with an HP lead. Nuclear comes in for the Ram. He will finish off Strike. And there we go. Again, Tornado Energy coming with the aggressive play. Four tanks left standing for Navi. They didn't tiptoe, they didn't wait, and that T-57 is a brutal damage dealer when it happens. Like, he can soak up some shells, he will fire four point blank and probably pen all, and then he can die. If he doesn't, it's even worse for the enemy. Navi is pretty much getting heading over at the moment. And Antolich will be the first one of reload here. He should be able to focus down Apowau. He needs one more to take him down. A low roll. He needs one more. But Griffon actually kills Apowau. The oh team kill coming out. Anatolich picks up Nesquin. Nuclear goes down as well. And how the tables have turned. Navi coming with the quicker reloads, recovering. And the team kill from Griffon. That might kick them in the behind. Well, that pretty much didn't work out as they wanted. Griffon should be able to pick up Rhino, no, but he, he doesn't tracked. pen. He got tracked and he missed. Now Griffon picks up Rhino but takes so much damage from Lefshire in return. Two shots taken. It's just him and Theodore left standing. Lefshire will pick him up here. Peeks out, peeks out. 301. One more shot. It's Kreloid from the back that does it. Theodore now the last one standing. And both these teams picking up their offensive round on Muravanka. What a jester plays here. Once In one moment you think it's done. I thought it was over. They're pretty much over. And then the reloads come in, kick in and the tides turn completely. There is obviously something we need to keep in mind. These teams need to be watched thoroughly <laughs> because they play until the last second. Yeah, indeed. And Navi there, we kind of forgot about the reload factor. They came off a of reload first and they killed three tanks in a mere five seconds. Well, they killed two and Griffin killed the other one. It was super fun. <laughs> but he would die anyways. Yeah, of course he, he was dead. If, if, if Anatolich doesn't low roll, he was already dead. Yeah, so like uh, that didn't change more or less anything, but still one would not expect them to fall so easily after. Like when they were in reload, you would expect they would run away maybe a bit faster. <laughs> Still, I like to play from Tornado Energy, even if it didn't work out. It was... It was great. It was good. It, it was, was really good. Choice, good. I think, and, uh, I think any other choice would have lost them the game anyways. It was just maybe one or two moments in that chaos that goes maybe out. Maybe some shells that were missed. Yes, we cannot know because when the fight like this starts, uh, you can't even call for a, for a target properly. Like everyone will shoot. Uh, it's natural. Yes, they will just pick what is lowest and closest, and if they they will not try to waste another second or two aiming someone else that is out of their reach at that moment. So in that chaos, very little things will decide who will win when you face uh, with uh, two good teams like this. Indeed, and uh, just I mean, turning energy almost. I think a few shells here or there really did cost them perhaps we can take a look at the stats here and left shot in that 430 version 2 like you said side, side scraping probably changed the game for navi 100 percent because he was shooting all the time and no and one Rhino. tried to ch challenge him because in the heat of the battle he's not easy target no he's everyone behind the house you have yes, to go for him everyone will face and try to shoot the butt shots and the things like that and he's a constant threat and at the end of the game he had the hp he could even withstand the attack of griffon Indeed, and nuclear, Diodor, Anatolich, all really nice damages here. There's obviously going to be a few guys with lower damage because, you know, when the T-57 comes around the corner and you focus on Spire first, kind of doesn't do I'm any really damage. I'm really interested to see how much damage actually that 57 did. If he, he needed to do all four for that kind of push. Yeah, but that's what we're going to see when he, this next page comes out. Nope, he didn't. That is, a, that is probably a game changer. If he connects all four... Only two connected. He needs to connect all four at that point. That's really bad, but he didn't fire the entire clip and he died. He got set on fire. Yeah, he did. He did get set on fire at one point. Uh, he was already like, he already took a ton of damage when he got set on fire. But still, you need to connect four out of four in that situation by looking at the HPs in the end. He connects four out of four, different game. Completely, because someone would be dead. Yes. 800 HP in this kind of trade off. And somebody He's wouldn't a have reload. Real change. But still, they were hoping maybe not every shell will be penned on the 57, but when he came around the corner, it looked like he had no armor. At this level, you do need to pen all your shots. Yeah, but like... But he kind of just pushed straight forward. So they all shot him in the side, but... Much of quick games here between these two. Next lineups already. Himmelsdorf coming up. CDC for Navi on the attack with an FE4004. <laughs> we know what this means, okay. Hinky. <laughs> Well, CDC is going to be a nice little block on some cap, and we have a, a kind of a trade, like something like a revamped all tactics when they push the hill, more or less, with the C3, FVTD, 
and CDC will probably do a block for maybe I7. The thing is, behind. with this, you can also go towards the rails. We've seen teams do it. You can park an E3 behind the CDC on the cap there as well. Yeah, but like this lineup is not really super good at defending its flanks. I know, I know, I know, but That's some the teams problem. decide to do it to, to switch it and up. They're you not know? really fast. No. So like that. But the thing is, with the E3 problem. going towards the rails, he doesn't really get pen, so you can push them back. Still, if you you can get really easily interrupted and cut yeah, off. yeah, I know. But we've seen what happens if you go from a hill every single time. They just kind of focus you down. If you know what I mean. We've seen it multiple times where, for example, the CDC dies or the first guy that comes around the corner dies, and it's like. Well, we shall see what they have planned. Do they want to cap from upper or from the lower side there? Probably from the upper. Yeah, probably probably their main goal is from the upper, but if they just like see the lineup and there's something that triggers them, we'll have to find out. But let's get into it. The second map, Himmelsdorf. Himmelsdorf, a small city map. The teams start the battle in opposite corners. Both bases are located close to each other, but in a way that you can't stay on the defensive all the time. The main attack routes pass through the hill, the alley and the railroad. But in general, the attack can be successfully executed through any part of the map. Heavy tanks and tank destroyers with powerful guns run the show here. However, a lot depends on the mobile light tanks. So Navi versus Tornado Energy here, one to one after Moravanka and Mojo, they are going on the hill. Yeah, it was a hard guess, but we did it. <laughs> And so is the Tornado Energy, they're all going there as well, to counter them. They have an Ivan Handra and Apple Wow is revamping the FV. I really like these camos actually, man. They're super cool, and especially in German tanks. Yeah, they, they make it look, uh, how to say? Like made from metal as yes. they are. Yes, they make it look really cool, but Nesqui just spotting the crossing. He knows that most likely they're not going to cross. He sees everything. He has view range all the way till the end. You can so. see the blue dots are really not paying attention to the rail much. And with the new spotting system, they're counting that uh, no one can really pass unspotted like in previous patches. Going to have to see how Navi decides to approach this counter from Tornado Energy. How they approach it, how they deal with it. Because E3 coming around the corner is penable by the gorilla because he will just track him. Let's see, this is a crucial moment now, because uh, they are probably guessing that Navi will have something waiting. I mean, that uh, Tornado will have something waiting for them. This is a really sneaky moment. Anatolic doesn't get penned by the first two shots. Nuclear and Diador both shooting, but... Oh, strike <laughs> on the crossing takes so much. Rhino doesn't take anything, though. Server gets 820 in return, but Strike did pay for that. Well, Strike is pretty much on one third of HP almost there, Whoa. and Nuclear pens the engine <laughs> deck. fire there. I think he hit the engine deck. And his commander is dead, man. Like no, did he, he hit the engine? No medic. What? Medic. What did he hit? Or he hit the, uh, the, the, the viewport? No, no, the viewport, the light. But there goes Lefsha. They need to kill Lefsha right now. Oh, no, Nuclear Was misses. Was No, Nuclear missed. But who shot him for a 200? Nesqui. Nesqui is here. 1390. Oh, he's there. Okay, I didn't see him. So Levsha here, he's finally doing the he's block. He's in position already. They just push him onto the cap. Yeah, he's finally doing the block and someone has to come down and deal with him. But nuclear, he's, he's actually a huge problem. Nuclear will be a problem, but now slides like... <laughs> don't worry, guys, I'm in position. If nuclear peaks now, he'll take like 600 from... Uh, obviously, okay. as Levsha expected, Levsha is dead. But he's positioned well enough that someone can push him. But honestly, mate... Someone actually has to cross that road. Inspire. And he's going to take speed and he's going to try. Yeah, but... Oh... Slide, please, no. This can hurt so much. Okay, so nuclear reposition now. We're going to have to see if uh, Tornado Energy have their trigger fingers. Ooh, there we go. Inspire, he's crossing. Takes only 400. Slide here, peaking, missing. That could have... Be a lot worse. Either one, of, either of the teams could have paid heavily for this one. But here we go. Nuclear is now getting back into position. Here, we know what he can do. Let's see if he can find can an he, angle. Can he see any part of? Yeah, his we, with he can. With he can yeah. under the gun, between the gun and the hole. I think he can even splash the hole if Inspirer has his gun inside of it. Because obviously, HE mechanics. If there's a module close, it resets. 
We will see very shortly about that, because if he can do that, all that is left for Navi in this kind of game is just a straightforward push with a setup that is far inferior than for that kind of game to Tornado. Also, we can see a difference in HP. It's almost 3,000 HP for Tornado in favor of Tornado. Yeah, almost 3,000 here. Inspire, 1 minute 15 left to cap this base. New use now repositioning as well. Gonna have to see if nuclear can reset it. And this camo really looks dank. And I, I think uh, it looks really cool on uh, German tanks because they're huge. So you can see it on large surface. On these other smaller ones, not so much. There's the shot. There's not connected. That's the Diodor with H3. Now Inspire has to play it careful. Not to overexpose. He's peeking out, and that's a nice shot from Inspirer onto Diodor. And still 37 seconds here. Tornado Energy, they need to reset right now. Well, not right now. They have one more shot at least from Nuclear. And it does look like it's going to be the 8-line push, Mojo. So the forces of Tornado are gathering up, and they're actually doing the push here because they're scared they will lose Nuclear here. But Nuclear in this moment is going for the decap. Griffon in his 50B is getting annihilated, but Cap is still on. Cap is still on. Apoa is taking so much damage to his FE215B. They still need to reset. Seven seconds, six seconds. Finally, the reset comes out. But in return, Tornado have paid what was a 3k HP lead. Has now gone down to a 2k disadvantage. Yes, nuclear kills Inspire. But they've lost so much HP at this point. Yana Tolic, though, seems to be making a little bit of an overextension here. Takes 1.6 from server. That's a great play. And all, all of a sudden, we're back even. But still, there is an advantage here for Tornado. They are defending. They still have seven guys. 1390 is coming from the back. He is coming from the back. And in this kind of game, he will be a problem unless they make an advantage now in this push. Also, Strike has a dead Amorek. But at the meantime, they lose near you. They lose up while they lose Griffon. They lose four, uh, three in quick succession with Nesquik coming from the hill. And that 1390 and Slide doesn't actually penetrate it. He, Nesquik has three more shots, two more. He can kill Slide here in the FE4005. Doesn't connect it. That could be crucial as Server picks up Creelord now. But still, Tornado is in a good position, like you said, Mojo. Server is now on less than one shot, but this can still go both ways. Dieter here, it looks like it will be all up to him and Nuclear. But still, 3 minutes 40 seconds, Navi is stuck in one corner. Yes, when Tornado pushed in on them, it looked like they put a hand in a snake's nest because they were dying all over the place. But still, they have gun advantage and HP advantage and tactical advantage because they're defending. They still have nuclear alive to 1,300 HP, which is also a big factor here. Rhino is going to be the one to take the challenge against them. Nesqui really... Spotted all three of them in the, last, in the last 20 seconds. Great stuff from him. Well, Rhino is trying to play one-on-one -on -one against Nuclear here. But honestly, that leaves them rather weak. Strike, when he fires some shells, they don't know it, but he has no repair kit. So he will not be able to do anything about anything in a future part of the game after that. So slide on 88 HP. I mean, if something looks at him wrongly, he will die. Nesqui is going to be the deciding factor here. He comes off the hill. 390 HP. If he can kill Slide, this game is over. It all depends if he can. Or if he can't. He's now slowly backing off here. He spots out Slide. Slide. Don't think he was aiming down at a nuclear. He's still waiting there. Rhino goes off the cap. Because Nuclear is speaking out, and Rhino is actually going for Nuclear shoots. He does not connect, and now they're going forwards. Rhino here is playing aggressive against the Nuclear. And finally, Nuclear is going to go down here. Dido makes the shot against Rhino, but Rhino is alive. And Nesqui can't really do anything. They're going to lose Slide here any second. Or there we go. Server picks up Slide. Now they need to kill Dido, who almost has Reload available. He does. He picks up Rhino, and it's just Strike left standing with a damaged Amorak. And it will be Tornado holding on by dear life and 643 HP. Dador brought a great, great shot here. Of course, he doesn't know that it is a dead Amorek for Strike, but he did counter shells. Strike fired three before that. He knew he has only one, so he waited. He took out a single shooter who would be able to make them misery. And then he just left for his teammates to deal with the 50B after that. So really good play by both teams. I mean, though this tactic of Navi is kind of, uh, let's say, static, it was still vicious and dangerous. And in a moment when a tornado pushed in, 
you could see the effectiveness of their players. Because that looked like uh, from 3k HP being down as Navi, they were suddenly in 2k HP up. So that means they did 5,000 damage in like 10 seconds or 15 seconds we Big were watching. Big mistake from Anatolich though, going alone, going down, getting clipped by a server. 1.6k damage taken and he should have waited for Inspire and then gone together. Still, even the best guys make mistakes. Yeah. Makes them like but kind of more interesting for us to watch. Those mistakes cost rounds. Exactly, but still, now we have a slight advantage again for a Tornado. It's 2-1. Two 2-1 to one. Two to one indeed, and wouldn't be surprised if Navi picks up the second round here on Himmelsdorf. Would you? No. Himmelsdorf is a good map for them, and uh, they play it really well. I like the t-shirts from uh, Tornado as well. Nice uh, branding on there. Wargaming League. Mm -hmm. Maybe they bring you one, mate, so you can have your collection. I need to ask. I will ask Applewell for that, yes. Yeah, there you to go. To bring me one at Grand Finals. Great idea, Mojo. You should have a closet only for <sighs> t-shirts of the league, man. I'm 100% doing it. I'm asking Applewell for a hoodie. <laughs> a hoodie, Mojo. But... Before hoodies. Before hoodies starts. Rhino. Nice, nice. Server again. Server is really like... Uh, I mean, there is definitely a reason why they took the guy, no matter how much we don't know him. He obviously deserves his place. Also, he proves to us that although he is maybe new here, he really knows how to ho hold, hold his wits in this kind of games. Yeah, he's been doing nice, consistent damage so far. Dylor as well with the grill doing okay. And Apowau actually saved the game there because he reset the base when there were seven seconds left and Nuclear did not have reload. Apowau is having a better games in uh, this part of the tournament. Imagine if Upwell dies, the game's over. Hmm? If Upwell dies, the game's over. You think? Six seconds left with nuclear that can't reset? Pretty possible. And here we go, the second page. Of course, Lefsha was not even uh, supposed to do any kind of special damage. He didn't even have ammo. Kappa. <laughs> you like really got him. So? I don't know, man. These guard That's guys, the they man. told me this. No, man. They told me this in the beginning of the season. Um, we don't bring ammo on our CDC because then he's more likely to get ammo wrecked. That's such a nonsense. I don't know if I should believe them or not, but I gave them my trust, so I said, okay, I believe you. You're a very gullible person. Not. So you would drive a CDC in a tactic without ammo just because of that, right? Maybe, yeah. Why not? I mean, it does get ammo wrecked a lot. Because in some stupid moment, you can actually fire a shot or two and make a difference. Scarium rammed people. He did damage that way. Really? Yes. <laughs> Good one, Scary. <laughs> you can see Anatolich here, he's already talking. You can see him getting nervous. Well, nervous, anxious, and ex excited. Leadership excitement. Left is like, I am ready. Ready, steady, go. I don't know, his change from tier 8 to tier 10 hasn't been the greatest, though, to be fair. No, but Lalevsha was always seen like uh, maybe kind of a weak link for Navi, but still, he is one of their consist consistent players. Maybe they would do better with a younger player, but still, such a replacement has to be first found and then trained into their system, how they play. Indeed, it's very true, Mojo, and a lot of people there. A lot of people there, actually. I think there it's a big venue where this is only one part of the show here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is like it's a Moscow lot of Expo. Yeah, it's a lot of content on the other rooms where you can play various games and do some different kind of stuff. So this is just one of the things that are available at Moscow at the moment. I would have, I would have uh, want to go so I could be with QB and tell him about my Swedish uh, tier 10 gun mark oh. and tell him that his knowledge and guidance through his YouTube videos have guided me to become a better player and knowing how to 3-mark. <coughs> Let's <coughs> take a look at the lineups. Wait, I'm joking. Huh? I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> on what? <laughs> uh, tornado here on offense. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, there's a lot of FETDs here. Well, the difference from Navi is with this, they can actually rotate the map. These tanks are fast enough so they can go anywhere they want. I would actually be a bit worried here for Navi because there is a potential for these FVTDs to wreck almost two-thirds of their team. 
everybody except for the IS-4, even the 113 is spendable. Yes. IS-4 is the one that's really annoying. But okay, let's say like 113 is a hazard yeah. when you shoot it, IS-4 is a really big hazard. VZ, yeah. WZ. VZ, they can even one shoot him. But Bachat, 50B, Grilla. <laughs> It's gonna be really interesting to see how they actually plan to do this because uh, one one uh, lousy shot by those FETDs means a huge counter attack by the rest of the guys. Some something down, yeah, something down. They are going down with everybody towards the eight line already, and Navi, no surprise, they're taking one two. Yeah, this is not something you want them to allow. You want to prevent them from pressing you out from that one cap. But let's see, this kind of play is rather interesting. Tornado is going super aggressive toward that eight line and uh, initial positions. Maybe they are anticipating that Navi might try to push the courtyard or something. Inspire here gained a lot of info already for his team. Strike now moving down Rhino in the window. And most of the tanks from uh, Tornado are kind of spotted. Apo is spotted over there. So they have some info on what's going on. And Inspire here keeping a check. If anybody risks it to come and challenge his position. Nesqui pretty much gave a lot of info back uh, while spotting their heavy tanks. So now we will have to see how will the rotation and the real plan envelop now. It does look like they will actually climb the hill like Navi did. The hill seems to be their option indeed. We've seen this position before when Anatole is and it doesn't always work as well because of longer turrets. can be shot in the back but he should be okay I think. I mean, if Krillard goes to A6, those FV 4005s will dig him out rather quickly. Mm -hmm. But let us see. They didn't leave the Ice 4 behind to just be thrown to the wolves, which is a good thing, I would say. And uh, Kirill in that Ice 4 might choose to cross and go to A6, but as Ducky already mentioned, if they just go from the lower side, they don't really need to shoot all the weak spots. They can just spam with hash all the time. The only thing that is a trick then is when you actually do those shots and he reports it, this is usually a trigger for counterattack. What is Apoa doing over there in K0? Lining up a trap? Yeah, he's waiting for a rotation from Inspire, I, um, I would say, or a left shot. Is near you AFK? Can't be. Is near you AFK? Someone can slap him. If he is, they're right next to each other. He hasn't moved. He's still there. I don't know. It's weird for to see somebody over K zero. <laughs> He's still there. What is he doing, Mojo? Well, they could have asked for reset while ago if they wanted. So it's not that. Now he's moving. Okay. They're just doing rotations up and down. And he was sitting in K0 for like two minutes. Like, Gri seriously. Griffin was spotted. Took a shot even. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those laser beams. Oh, they're trying. But still, there's only one shot of damage done. And uh, they do know where one FETD is, but they have no idea whatsoever where the remaining force of Tornado is. But the only th good thing going here for Navi is, of course, the clock. Clock always working in their favor. I mean, Hellraisers, <laughs> Tornado Energy have lost about 4 minutes and 30 seconds. And Strike takes a shot as well. They need to be careful on that corner. I mean, if the FE4005 peaks, gets a snapshot off, well, we know what will happen. It does look like they're trying to bait Anatolic into doing something that will buy them some time. And they're buffing up the forces for the eight line, gradually approaching, but still there is always, always someone watching in the back, waiting in a trap for a rotation from Navi. It almost looks like they're really waiting for some tactical play from Navi that will be a split all over the place so they can actually take them out because they're at the moment not really positioned to deal with any kind of serious push on a combined courtyard and eight line because they also don't know where is majority of Navi tanks. Well, look at Navi, they're all falling back. Anatolic. Strike. They're all going back. Yeah. Experienced stat peders, red line snipers. Donators. But just a matter of time here. I mean, Nirio's moving back onto the hill. 
and think afterwards. See, <laughs> be an eight. This is Go a good. Damage. This <laughs> is a great rotation from uh, Navido. I mean, they will catch complete tornado team like this. Well, they're pretty much uh, safer when they're close like this, and uh, we're half of the map into the game. Five minutes are up. It doesn't look like Tornado still made the final decision what will they push, but they're leaning toward the upper cap. Now the way to do it with this is rather tricky. You have to position those FVTDs in defensive ways so where they, when there is a counter rotation you can actually do some damage because if you miss where is that rotation coming from, you will miss your shots. They have 20 plus seconds reload, they're out of the game effectively and when the other tanks die, you're pretty much done. Nesqui here is just spotting for his team and now nuclear, I mean, look at this tornado energy. They just realized these kind of things that Navi would rotate and now they're taking control of the courtyard. There's a lot of yin and yang here, up and down going on. Time though, time is starting to become a problem. No one really wants to throw a game, like, I mean, this would be a great victory for Tornado going 3-1 up. Navi also wants to equal to come back. So, like, no one wants to throw off a game on uh, some hasty rotation. You can see the nuclear is now already in a D5 position as Nesqui is going to go and probe the cap. He sees uh, Kriloid, he's like, well, I'm not taking this fight, he'll probably run away afterwards or pretend like he is supported by some FETDs. But I think they're just gonna try to kill Nesqui, but he shall only take two shots, I think. One, and engine damage. Two, repairs now. So Nesqui down to 202 HP is the trade for gaining some positional advantage over Navi. It's actually a decent trade since he's still alive and he can even pressure the other cap if needed. But Navi is kind of chasing really aggressive there. They might even catch a nuclear out in the courtyard if they keep going like this. He needs to start moving <laughs> desperately with that IS-7. He virtually oh. has no support whatsoever. But he's now in that little area where you can uh, flip-flop bet between the D and E line. He has support from near you from the hill. Now he does. Good timing here for a Tornado. Yeah, everything working out so far for them. Apoa is on the cap, it is 1-1-3, which is not the easiest to reset. Left Sha is going to have to be the one to do it. Nesqui is now joining as well. I mean, this is good from Tornado Energy, but near you, he's going to get flanked. But in return, <laughs> no Rhino taking so much damage, minus 1.8. And he's going to take one more, but it doesn't actually connect. But Nuclear can finish him off, and that will be pretty much the tank down. Kiriloid on the other side is getting completely annihilating, so is Strike. Everything goes well so far for Tornado Energy. And Navi doesn't even have positions to deal with this. No, indeed. And 26 seconds left here on the cap. They have to be quick. Theodore is probably going to go join that one as well. Finally, near you is taking damage. Inspirer has two left. The cap gets resetted as well. Lefstra is doing some damage or trying to do some damage here against Server. But Server will soon be reloaded. And a tier 9. Oh, a big shot there from Theodore. But doesn't connect it with the FE4005. And still, the cap is on. 20. 30 seconds more, Left Shy is here under the pressure. He doesn't have many shells to deal with Ice Server. Server finished him off and gained a crucial position against Navi. Navi's HP is like 2.5k down and positional. They're completely in a, in a, in a bad, bad way. Kriloid now forced to go forth. Anatolius takes a big shot by Griffon, but Griffon is going to stay alive. Kriloid goes down, still 25 seconds left here, and Strike needs to be the next one to go and reset. Apoa will probably finish him off as well. There we go, Strike goes down. Three tanks left standing for Navi and Tornado Energy. They're completely in control of this cap, and there's no way in hell that Navi is going to get close to resetting this anytime soon, as Nesky is the one on the cap. Seven seconds, slides on fire to make it even worse. He's burning, and so is this round. It's gone. Two seconds, one second, Tornado Energy is going to pick it up, three to one, and what a display. Well, when it's going bad, it's not just bad, it's raining hell here for them. Like, Tornado is showing us really good games here, and I hope they will be able actually to keep it up, because this kind of pressure was not something now is used on. So... Someone uh, called a timeout there. Yes, it looked like that. I think Nirio was having issues. Like, I do think he was having issues in the beginning of the round. It seemed like that. 
gonna have to see how or what is the issue. You can see talking to the admin, admin relocating the information back. But that was great stuff here from Tornado Energy, really. It was, a, you would, one would call it textbook book ro rotation, but the execution was really good and keeping the 50B on a hill as a trap, that was really good. Because that's actually what broke the Navi in the end. They didn't have means to push. No, and Rhino took so much damage from that. Let's take a look at stats, Mojo. See exactly what happened at that round. Server played really well. Wouldn't be surprised if he's on top again. And he is. 4k damage done. Well done, Larry. He crossed through one two-line for free, pretty much. And after him, Diador. So on the first page, we have Inspire, but he mainly did damage on the top of the hill, which was not really important. Anthony Yu, who was reloading. Yeah. So really not an important issue for them. And next to him, only Anatolich on this page. This is not good, Mojo. This is not good. Well, it's not good for Navi, but <laughs> it's very good for Tornado. It's not good for my prediction. Uh, neither for mine, man, but this is reality facing our statistics. Statistics, statistics do know to fly. I mean, in a garbage. Mm, hopefully not, Mojo. I like to be right. Sometimes. Every so often. Well, it's not too late yet. We will see on the next map. Indeed, and there's Strike, zero damage. Rhino, 400. Slide, one shot of damage. I mean, even Nesky with his zero was more useful because the, uh, he at least made them rotate left and right and pressure the cap. What do you think Anatolich is thinking right now? I would wonder actually what is the next map because I can't remember. Cliff. Cliff. Oh, wow. But we've seen some decent play there from Navi. But then again. So have we from uh, Tornado Energy, though. Mm -hmm. And uh, Navi was playing against Kazna, who's not playing Cliff that well. While Tornado was facing Ding, and Ding was trying their best. Hmm. <laughs> what do you think, Mojo? Scoreline after Cliff. 4-2? I think 1-1 one, one will, will go. 4-2. I mean, this last round wasn't even close. Eh? Not close at all, actually. No, they really outplayed Navi by far. It wasn't even to the tank lineup because like, uh, those FVTDs mostly actually didn't pen their shells. Yeah, no, they just did 700. Yeah, so that's like average damage when you hit a harder part of some armor. So they could have done that damage even with some other tank. It really wouldn't matter. It might... Uh, make Navi reluctant to play certain positions and play styles, but damage-wise they didn't really do anything special. So what was won here is tactical, tactical win on Himmelsdorf, and that is super important because Himmelsdorf is something like a ground base zero map map for Navi. I mean Navi since the first tournament is uh, that that's like the backyard man, like they were inventing based of base tactics instead. Tactics for Himmelsdorf from the start. Base tech, tech tactics? Yeah, yeah, English is hard. Yeah, now we do the trendsetters for the base tactics. Indeed, Mojo. Now, <sighs> Navi, I don't think they're going to be tilted whatsoever. Maybe a little bit, but not much. They're probably quite annoyed at the moment, but uh, I've seen them in this situation more than once, and they just try to find a way to get out of it. And even if they don't, I mean, Deluxe already said it once when they lost the second Grand Finals. Like, okay, we lost now, so everyone knows we can lose, and finally we lost, and thank you. We can now just play normal. <laughs> <laughs> but Cliff, it is double E50 from Tornado Mojo. I told you, I told you, I told you they're going to bring something unexpected. Double E50. E50s are known to bounce really nice. Also, we've seen it in European League, like... <laughs> 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 like uh, the guys like Homer and Legend like to play it. Well, Mojo, double E50, it almost feels like a random battle. It's easy farm for the W and 8, but Jens Navi might be slightly harder. Obviously, the E50, very strong, has a good frontal hull. Lower hull is weak, third is kind of weak as well, but you have to aim to penetrate it. That's the main yes, difference. If Navi with their clippers do not perform perfectly, 
and uh, they bounce too many shells, those E50 will be their bane. Yeah, because they will ram them. Ram them really hard. And shoot them in the process, which is even worse. <laughs> How is shooting worse? I was actually happy yesterday. Uh, I almost lost the Himmel game and one guy, random guy in my team, uh, he was like on one shot against one guy who was a clipper and he rammed him and shot him at the same time. Unexpectedly showing bravery and winning the game for our behalf. <laughs> Why were you not winning the game? I was dead. <laughs> <laughs> shot by Arti. <laughs> shot by Arti indeed. And this is going to be a restart. So there was a restart. So a little bit longer. Not much. Oh, look at your Christmas tree. It's not decorated. Left shot. Come on. Deco why Why you not play randoms? Decorate your tree. Why you play no randoms? I'm on level 10. You are a buyer premium level 10. A sellout. What? What do you mean? You bought your decorations. No. No? Where did you get your friend JMX? Premium tank. Santa Claus. A Santa Claus. He came early this year. Dude, I've been wondering, like, imagine... I don't did, you know tip, how did you tip Santa Claus 50 I don't euros? I don't, I don't know how many people actually have it. But if I'm going to go in randoms, there are going to be people like, how did you get that tank? And I'm going to be like, Serp gave it to me. Kappa. Well, in some <laughs> moment, he actually did. Huh? Yeah, he perhaps. in Aaron Jesus' moment there where you got it. It's quite a lottery to choose between like a 30 days premium and such a tank. It's 30 days premium, 2.5k gold, either the AMX, the French Liberté without camo, yeah. um, the Scorpion, the Moots, and the M46 Korea. Yes, it is Korean. Well, enough blabbling from us. Let's get into it, into our third map here on Cliff. Cliff, the most dynamic map in the league. Battles on Cliff always turn into desperate double-edged fights. Teams start from the same spots as they do in standard battles. The first base is located near the defender's spawn point, and the second is at the bottom of the hill. Sometimes teams split their forces and send several tanks through the 1-2 line to the left of the small hill, but usually both teams play at the center. The attacking team can send one of the tanks up to the lighthouse or behind it. Fast and quick-firing vehicles are better suited for this map, mainly medium tanks, including tanks equipped with autoload. Hello. Hey. Meet Cliff. <sighs> Hi, Cliff. How are you doing? <laughs> Cliff, don't speak. <laughs> oh, true. <laughs> Made of rocks. Look, he's full of stones. But uh, again, a restart, of course. I believe uh, players are as frustrated as we. But you really think so? Yeah, they totally like these breaks. Navi does. Give some time to relax, cool down. Mm, true. Might throw off a bit uh, on Tornado because they were like hyped up taking yep. these games. Now they're losing their hype. It's over, it's done. It's done. Two we're going to die. We are leading 3 to 1, but we're going to die and lose now. Exactly. Well, if they actually lose Cliff, it's going to be very bad for them. They just need to win at least one ra round here and keep it up. At least one round, it's not that easy as it sounds, Mojo, against Navi. I don't know the C50 tactic. Where are they going to go, you think? You have to kind of go middle, no, with the E50s. I mean, do they work anywhere else? I don't think they can work on one-two line. I really <laughs> don't see them playing any kind they of... They were best ramming. Problem. I'm going sh straight into it. Just yeah, ramming. they need to soak up shells and do the damage. Straightforward damage. Yes, pretty much. YOLO middle? Davai? Rush B? YOLO, YOLO. Wow, we haven't seen that one in a while. Well, let's find out, Mojo. We're going into game now. So, 3 to 1 for Tornado. Navi defending, Tornado on the attack. And they're the actually F50's sending both the 50s down. One, two line. Okay, we don't know anything anymore, Mojo. What do we know? Nothing, Mojo, is what we know. Well, let's be educated. One way or another. Nah. Someone's going to get educated here. Apple already got spotted in his E50. Hey, so there's the that. tank with the best camo value ever, so. Oof, 354 by Kriloid. He actually didn't uh, uh, load heat, which would be normal because of uh, specifically this. I guess Kriloid was expecting something like this. But while we are talking, there is already some exchange on the middle. Yeah, indeed. Spire is getting wrecked from all angles. He goes down towards Griffon. Now Server in return will go down. He sits a one for one trade, but Strike in the meantime, he gets dropped to 189 HP as well. And still, they can't deal with Griffon. He's in a safe position and he's clipping even more. Takes oh, one shot in return, but 
Triloids is going to go down, go down in, in the meantime as well. This is a, such a great play now for Tornado because they're going to throw two guys down from the Navi. Navi is now left on four guys. Yes, they keep the higher ground, but still, they haven't even cleared that. They have guy in their ranks between them. Well, finally, not anymore. Finally, they clear out Griffon. So they're about 800 HP down at this moment, but they don't have reloads available. If Tornado Energy realizes this, this gives them an option to do something. Dyrdor is on a slither of HP, though. 27 to be That's exact. That's an RNG HP, man. That can go in one shot left and right. But in this case, it was following Tornado. Tornado was the lucky one. But that driver on near you, that will not help them. Since they're attacking and that Bachat losing a driver, that means he will not be able to really climb anywhere really efficiently. The thing here is, though, the extra gun in the game gives Tornado a massive advantage in terms of rotation. And Diodor will be able to at least support Snipe same as near you. But the when you look at this situation like this, actually, Navi has it better. Because the only tank that can really rotate from Tornado energy is Nesqui. Near you, Navi doesn't know it, has a dead driver. Diodor is on one shot. And you have two E50s. E50s are not really a great uh, rotation tank. Oh, ho, ho. And I thought it did not get spotted out here by near you, who's in B1, B2. Could get spotted any time. He lands nice a nice shot onto nuclear there. A second shell coming into Apo. Wow, this is good stuff here from the Anatolic. And I don't know how near you didn't spot him. Perhaps he wasn't peeking, but now Anatolic has a good position near you. Is pushing up though. He's gonna spot out the Anatolic. There we go. He gets spotted. Let's see how much damage he takes. Rhino actually goes down towards Nesqui. So that's a good thing there for Tornado Energy. But now they need to kill near you somehow. Near you versus Slide and Anatolic here. So they know where two tanks are. They only one is missing. Anatolic has to actually back away a bit, just a bit. But since they're controlling the main part of the higher ground. He's not really in huge danger there. Ooh, the Anatolic just about misses near you. Drops down to 111 HP here. So good stuff from Slide in the TVP who just about almost got near you. If he killed him, that would have been super crucial. But Anatolic takes a shot in the meantime. In return, Nesqui and Nuclear, they're now pushing up and they should be dealing with Slide here in the TVP. But Nuclear is now taking damage as well. This is still either way. These two teams, 200 HP apart. Left shot kills Nuclear. But now, Slide getting shot in the back. He needs to drop down. Near you tries to make the connection. He can't do it. Oof. Slide misses. Near you kills him. Anatolic, the last one standing here. And Nesqui is almost full HP. There's almost no chance for Anatolic to win this. The bounce coming off near you connects the shot though. He's on 242 HP and somebody will come finish him off. It'd probably be Apoa. One more shot. There we go. He picks it up. Four to one Mojo. Who would say? Who would say this is coming? But still the games are of course not over. Brilliant play here by uh, Tornado. Something unexpected done. And uh, again, a same shuffle they used more or less like on Murovanka even, you would say. When they did the opening that completely caught Navi off guard, when they managed to take out that light, light in the field with positioning tanks, they did something similar here. They showed their E50s, played aggressive with the rest, and then did a complete rotation down, catching off both light and the medium that was supporting down. Felt like Navi should have won that one. Yeah, but Navi was completely off foot. Like they did re return to the game in one moment, but uh, Tornado was kind of steady enough to keep that gun advantage. Not the HP one. HP was pretty much close all the time, but they kept those guns they had in the game. Anatole just about missed that shot onto near you. Let's take a look at the statistics. See who was the carry near you here. Great performance from him. And yeah, near you by far. First here, 2.8K. Anatole and slide below him. Really mixed up first page. It's kind of confusing when you, everyone has yellow signs there. <laughs> <laughs> You distinguish them by shape of the logo, Mojo. It's it's misleading. <laughs> One should complain. Well, first page is first page. I'm really actually is usually interested to see the second one. But the second page is just the second page. Not really when you see the people who missed 20 shells or so. The Z50s, I don't think they really worked out that well, to be honest. I don't know. But they may throw Navi to play differently. You understand? So there you go, Inspirer. Strike took a really bad position. I mean, they pushed down one two lines. He was on that little hill there. 
and if he drops, he dies to near you. If he goes forwards or stays, he dies to the other guys, so it's like really stuck. But why did Inspire do only one shell of damage? Because he tried to drive up on the ramp and he got clipped by two Bachas, which he somehow didn't expect to be there. Griffon and Server. So, no ID, Mojo. Well, let's take a look at the lineups for the last round here on Cliff. And this could be 5-1 to one for Tornado. Navi coming back here with the RD. Tornado with the Griller. That's the same against Ding. They play the identical yep. against Ding, but against Ding, they hard-pressed Mill. Now, I'm not 100% sure what can they do now, because this is kind of the game, guys, where they will just throw off all the wild ideas they have. They might practice for a while, but not show it in any kind of normal match, because they will just save it for opponent like Navi is. Indeed. Now, do you think the RT is going to have an effect here? We saw it when Ding used it. Mary did some damage, but his team ultimately did lose. Uh, RT has only effect if you an actually manage to stop enemy team from progressing. So if they manage to slow the game down, and they're experienced enough to do it, then RT will do that needed damage over time. Because RT is not something that will just do instant damage in a start, unless some one lucky shot. Of course, that can happen. Like, Kuslok shots can happen. So 4-1 to one here for Tornado against Navi. Navi now on the offense, Tornado wanting to hold back the assault from Navi. And look how many tanks are going down the one too. Mm -hmm. But there is a whole lot of tanks from Tornado going straight for the middle. So it does look like they will try to do an overmatch there. Perhaps indeed a nuclear will just about get the spot or not. He actually didn't see any of oh. the bad shots from Navi. This is going to be very, very bad for them. Finally, the bad shots get spotted out. And look at this. They're just rushing the one-two line. They're not going to stop here. Up while near you server. They're going for Rhino. Left shot already taken damage. Nesqui drops low. Rhino, he needs to do his full clip. Near you and server are going for him. But the crossfire is on point. Up while gets caught in between all of them. He goes down. Now near you in a 1v1 with Rhino. He's going to lose that one as well as server drops down to a one shot. And this is better for Navi. They completely surprised Tornado because of one failed spot. Already three bad shots down, two on a one shot. This round is over. Nuclear completely costed them this round. Same like Korit did cost Ding, if you remember. Same on a cliff. Failing to spot from the one-two line that there is rotation from the enemy coming in. Tornado went blindly in because they didn't expect enemy on their right side. They never expected to see anyone there. And when it happened, they really tried their best to deal with it. Played as much aggressive they could. But still, it's just too much to deal with. You have like three or four clippers in your flank, man. It's not something you survive. <laughs> like how Nuclear pretty much go around by three different people from Navi to finish them off. Now Griffon, the last one standing strike. He's Whoa! coming in. <laughs> oh, the flying Russian trying to land on Griffon, but he's now getting shot from all sides and he'll be going down. Ram to finish it off as well after some shots already killed him. Four to two. Now that was Nuclear not spoiling whatsoever. Yeah, this was a really great comeback here for Navi. Also in good fashion to bring them the, some needed morale back because they were pretty much three games down. Now they're just one map down, just one. <laughs> they seemed a little frustrated because they were ramming nuclear everywhere. Yeah, they just wanted the vengeance. It was a, not a nice game, but it was well deserved because in how real. how is he so late on the corner? I he have didn't, no he didn't, idea. He didn't whatsoever. go to the house spot. He went to the corner, and all of them passed already. And then they just drove down middle and. They just, just didn't take good enough good in angle to spot. They just got caught in complete crossfire. Like, honestly, stats don't even matter. The fact that they drove into a crossfire of two bachelors on one side, four on the other. I actually had this situation in one clan war, and I was like, super annoyed how the guy down didn't spot the enemy. Now I know he didn't take good path there. Easy. But this guy should be a bit more experienced, eh? <laughs> I mean, he did a lot of damage, but that doesn't matter when your team gets caught in a three-way crossfire. But what does it matter if a light tank does 2.3k damage, 2.2k damage, when you lose like this? And you lose because he didn't spot. So it doesn't really matter what he did after Yeah, if that. he spotted them, they could have turned right and just YOLO down onto the batch and one too. They would, they would bring completely different decision. They would never go straight. Never. They would have probably turned right and yolo yes, one too. They would leave Grilla up and all the budgets where he stayed eventually. With nuclear from the bottom side. Yes, and everyone would just go down and Zerg. And they would actually have a rather good chance to win because yeah. Navi would have less tanks there. They would have two batches out of the fight. Nuclear would come in with a single shooter. Yeah, indeed. You can see Griffon that 83 damage only. And that's probably when, when uh, he strike fell down on his head. Yeah, when Strike jumped on him. So. 
Well, we still have a game here. Well, we did expect a game, and still we are still within boundaries of prognosis, Ducky. <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. Tornado can win one more round, and then we need to start winning rounds. Uh, we, we, <laughs> wow! I'm in Team Navi now. Let's go. I like the subtle product placement there from Tornado. They all have a kind of tornado energy. Yeah, I was really, unopened. I was really laughing when I heard how they actually got their name because everyone thought they got actually tornado sponsored rocks. by Tornado Rocks. And Tornado Rocks had one team in a Golden Russian League. So when they realized that team is not going to pass to the finals, they actually took another one, but they didn't pass to the finals either. So we were like, did they just sponsor the third one within one season? <laughs> nope, they didn't. But here, Mines, the next map. Navi on the attack, Tornado on the defense. Lorraine, Artie, and two Grillias for Tornado Esports. Tornado played two Grillias before, if you remember. They, they played, played three at the finals. They played super aggressive. And uh, we'll see how will they do it now, because... Navi with that RT and TVPs can be really nasty. Yeah, we saw what RT could do today. Meritorious versus uh, Tornado Esports. And maybe that's why they're not picking an FV, <laughs> FV215B183 this time. But uh, still, this RT, I mean, with Grillas, you cannot really that effectively rush in defense anymore. So what is their plan? If they just position them defensively, RT will <laughs> dig them out sooner or later. Well, Moji, we're going to have to find out as Navi are trying to make the comeback here. Let's find out if they can do it on Mines. Mines, a small summertime map with lots of hills, rocks and other cover. The teams start the battle in the usual locations, but the base locations are different. One is located in the bottom part of the village and the other one is in the water. One of the key objectives is the centre hill. That's why the teams will often select fast vehicles and tanks with strong turrets for cover. So here we go, Navi versus Tornado still. 4-2 to two in favor of Tornado. Navi on the offense, Tornado on the defense. Nesqui here going to make the climb. Smooth, smooth criminal. Mm, nice, very nicely done. Very We've nice. Seen so many fails here, but Nesqui is not one of them. And there we go, Navi is taking over the control of the hill completely safe way. There is no easy, easy shortcuts taken here. Ooh, some damage taken though by Nesqui. And this is what I like. This is what a lot of bad shots don't do. Wait, did he have a repair kit? Wait, no, no, never mind. I was going to say something, but never mind. What? I thought he had a med kit, but he didn't. He got tracked. It oh, looked like he a, a repair kit. Yeah, it looked like one of his crew members died. I was going to compliment him for using a med kit for that position, because when one of your crew members dies, that position becomes useless. I would actually play it. <laughs> it's fine, almost went up and over. <laughs> you see, he did it so well compared to Lefsha, mm. he almost w went over the cliff. Yeah, Lefsha didn't even ha come there half of the way. Needed. You see, Nuclear's now playing 113 instead of FE215 by 183, and Slide's gun got damaged. Oh, no. He repaired it already. That's so annoying. Look, minus repair kit. Oh, that is the worst thing. The worst thing ever, that is. What did he on earth did he damage his gun? Krillia, the Diodor, probably. And then he would be lucky, rather. Well, it depends. I mean, if Diodor could only see his gun, it's good to shoot the gun. Yeah, still, but I'm saying, like, then he's lucky to not taking any By damage. the way, Diodor will know, because he will know he hit the guns, so he gets critical hits, so he knows he has to repair it, so he knows slide is probably minus repair kit. That's a good thing. But Nesqui is already up there. They know it. They have defensively positioned Inspire on the hill. So the first prognosis to like counter him and his position is already done. Uh, now they need to do the steady approach and slowly, slowly, well, trying to use Inspire and Creloid to do it. Yep. If Nesqui gets spotted again, rip, rip in pieces. Nesqui has no reason to pee there. So much, we've seen it so many times, Mojo, when people don't have reason to peek. True. So, are they doing... Ooh, Artie got spotted. Kiri Lloyd is spotted. But is there anyone to shoot it? If Nesqui peeks, he's gonna get handed over. Okay, he's unspotted now. That is always, you know... A little bit... Uh, but they do know the position of Arti now, and they can pretty much uh, position other guys, so they don't get shot by it. 
nice shot there from Strike on the server. Slowly Navi chipping away some HP. They're now about even to Tornado, who's obviously have a little bit hefty line. Ooh, that blind shot, that could have been painful. It's only 24, but 74. it could have been more. 74? Yeah. But it could have been way more. I was really lucky because I have a moment, I have a feeling like he even moved in that moment when Shell was <laughs> flying there. Like he was actually moving later. So Tornado already took up all their def defensive positions they were interested in. They're keeping Apple Wow in a... It looks like he's in the middle there, but that's a little bush below the hill that tanks can use. Left shot just dodged the Dider shot, Ayoi. but he didn't dodge Griffons. <laughs> Lucky one. Is Kriloy going to try and get behind the rock now? Like uh, Meritorious? He got spotted. Is he going to go down or is he going to survive? I don't think there is anyone who can actually shoot him. Okay, he's alive. He's alive. But they tried, though. The shell just about hit the mountain. Mm. This is risky stuff. And Leftra is taking even more damage here. 773. He really needs to get out of there. Well, this is a new popular position. Something we learn every day. So this is a new position for Arti. How to deal with the camp below the hill. But what do you do with that kind of team? if a uh, defender has enough mediums and they just push you in the middle. Look at Nuclear, he's pushing up so far to try and deal with this position. They don't have anybody that can play against him. Left shot is still here, Nesqui takes a shot though, and Nuclear, he's pushing up really far to try and find an angle on Kriloid. And Inspire is spinning him down for now, so that's okay, Nuclear taking even more damage. Now he's getting Oof, punished. What a shot by Nesqui Oof. here. Nesqui, but he goes down towards the one shot for this though. Is this a worthwhile trade? I don't know. I mean, also left shot is on one shot, but uh, that was a super nice shot by him. And Nuc Nuclear is really, really, yeah, really... Yeah, he tried, he tried to go um, counter the RT and he got punished for it. He didn't want to get the same treatment as he got from Meritorious last time. The RT is aiming far behind him now and waiting. Will he try to blind shoot, maybe? Because we can see the limitations of him. If Nuclear gets spotted now, RT could blind shoot him. Oh, he knocked over the tree. Don't think Reloid's gonna blind shoot. He's gonna wait for somebody to spawn. Theodore gets spotted though. He might be able to hit that. They go in for the hell mojo. Ooh, can he hit Theodore? He shoots. No, 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 no. That was uh, too small of a lead. But now they're going towards the hill. Rhino Slide will be the first one to take this damage here. Two TVPs, so this could be a lot of damage. Slide so has three shots available. Inspire is there as well. Apoel taking the damage. Bounce of the back armor, but he takes so much. Minus, minus 1.4, and there's still Inspire in the back. This is not going to work out whatsoever for Tornado. No, Tornado is getting pretty much shredded here to the pieces, and the TVPs as fast reloaders, they're just gonna be done with this really fast. Kiloid is killed in RT, but in this moment it doesn't really matter. What only matters is that Navi has 2.5k advantage in HP. And, and there's like going three for guys on one shot here. Strike's now in a 1v1 with server. He should be able to win that. He's already two shots up here. Strike kind of outplaying server at this point. Server's in trouble. He needs to run away. Strike will probably chase him down. Here we go. Strike's now pushing forwards. That will be minus server here any second. Second shot taken. He might do one more on to Strike. Strike picks it up. Rhino picks up Nuclear in the meantime as well. And now the pieces start crumbling here for Tornado as they'll probably start losing tanks all over the map. Now Slide kills Apoa as well. Apple went alone to try and kill him. No idea why when there's two grills on the hill. Apoa goes for Slide. Slide picks him up and Slide stays alive on 9 HP. This is going really bad for Tornado here. They, it looks like they will completely lose their defense here. It doesn't even look like they have a really good idea what to do with defense at the moment on mines. No, nope, not indeed. I yeah. think this new patch pretty struck them hard because they're used to play offensive. Left shot now lands the shot onto near you, who goes down to 75 HP. Strike goes onto the cap. Now we have all the angles, all the positions. Now they're finally going for slide again, who has one more shot. He'll do it onto Griffon. There we go. Dido's in the meantime getting clipped here by, by the Rhino. Indeed, he goes down. Now slide it went down in return as well. But Nesqui Griffon near you. 3v5, yeah, no. No, not really, especially, look, Griffon even has a dead gunner. That's not gonna help with Grilla's performance. Inspire's not coming off the hill as he knows he has enough HP to solo the rest of the team. Griffon will probably give him a shot on the way out. Nice, without a Seriously. gunner. But it's not gonna be enough, Mojo. Yeah, it's like, oh, he shot me, oh. Well, another shot here by Nesqui from the hill. No, no, Nesqui. Yes, Nesqui. Anatolich picks up Nesqui in return, though, near you. 
He's waiting. He, he wants to do one more shot on the Anatolic. will come around the corner any second. Anatolic. Near you is moving forward. Can near you at least penetrate the shot here? There we go. Sets him on fire. Anatolic has a fire extinguisher. Picks up near you. And Mojo, this match is far from over as Navi is going to make it 4 3 as Griffon comes over the hill. Doesn't pick it up. Rhino kills him instead. 3 to 4 here. Still a lead for Tornado, but it's crumbling. Yeah, they're in offense now on mines. They did decent last time, but uh, decent doesn't cut it against Navi. Nope. Navi, the last two rounds, was superior. Navi was outplaying the uh, last two rounds as they were outplayed previously. Yep. But what matters is always in this kind of games is the uh, momentum you gain. So Tornado is probably from being high up in the clouds and getting really close to match points, losing two games, and this is almost a tie between them. And they will go to... Uh, attacking side and we need to see does Navi have a good idea how to defend mines now since the patch uh, tools they don't know several positions on the mines were changed heavily well one only really that affects anything uh two actually one is on the water side of those little hills now you have new positions when you can put ma mediums mm. and uh, one is this climb from defensive climb from defense side which you could do to just go and well, what do you mean with water side where exactly Below the lighthouse, uh, you mean on the, the on, on the, the right attacker side, side or did when you are attacking, when you pass the lighthouse toward the enemy. On that was the right there before. Side. That was there before. Yeah, you couldn't climb like this. Now, th now there is like a little trench, and you can just hobble up. There. Yeah, th there was th there was there little trench there before. Navi it, Navi used um, used that exact position against the Hellraisers in the finals. But the entire position was elevated. Elevated now. No, that was that's bed. that's before the lighthouse. Okay. So from the attacker side, before the lighthouse was changed. After the lighthouse didn't really change. It was before the lighthouse that got elevated. Well, this is the first time I've actually seen it. They used it, they used that position like uh, for the defenders to drive up to the island, right? There's the. No, this is attackers using. Yeah, but the attackers mm -hmm. drive past the lighthouse into that yes. dip. Yeah, this used, used before. It was a really great position. I like how they use it. Uh, but let's take a look at the lineups instead. But yes, Ice 3 here from Navi, double <laughs> grill, yeah. Four bad shots as well, so. Tornado with the M40, so preferring that over the Lorraine RT. No shenanigans behind the rock. I don't think the M40 can climb there. I don't know if he has enough speed. I don't think so. I think they will just go with the pure splash and damage. He needs to connect something here. I mean, he can one-shot everybody. Yeah, he can pretty much destroy them all. But the use of Ice 3, maybe they will leave him as under a Under the hell, under the hell probably. I mean, if you lose him, it's only a tier 8. What do you have of the T49 of to gain anymore? No, I was saying like they can even use him as a spotter toward the houses instead of leaving anyone forward there. I think they'll just put him under the hill, honestly. Could be. Then there are th probably their reasoning is like, okay, it's just an IS3. If he dies, well, then he dies. No? Yes, it is. But uh, Tornado, on the other hand, with playing with M40, I don't know, will Navi even have to bother with that that much? We'll have to see. I mean,. I think they'll play it standard, leave some Bacha to spot like Tornado did against Ding, put the Ice 3 there. Do you think they can just push with all they have Navi, go to the middle immediately? Yes. I mean, they can they can take the hill. So uh, they can push four bats on the hill, the grill is behind, the Ice 3 in the hold on. If they so choose to. But don't think they're going to do it? I'd be surprised. You mean F1, right, Mojo? Uh, yes. Yeah, that was used. Okay, I really missed it and I didn't see it so far. Yeah, it's 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 very situational though. But Navi not going for the hill, but look at their positions though. This is um <laughs> They're all counting nine zero. Every single one of them is positioned to counter nine zero. This is a hundred percent trap, Mojo. Yeah, I can see the position of the tanks, so they are expecting the rotation from tornado to come from that side to try to clear them out and they will just burst out with all the tanks on that side but Tornado having an M40 RT they can play a different kind of game and uh, what is Love Shadow doing here? I feel like it's gonna be a restart it does look like that yep because the admin came behind like waving mm. his hands go garage Angar Angar well, back to Angar or back to us, whatever you can pick. We're staying on the st same result, of course. Maybe 
Navi will try to play the trap. Maybe now they will not. Mm, I think they will try to play the traps though. As long as the managers are not allowed to talk to them right now, there's no need not to play it. You don't need the manager when like uh, they're in the game and they know what's spotted or not. Well, they only saw Lesha. Exactly. That is not enough info. Yeah, but the, they can pretty much guess that most of the tanks are the right there below. Mm. Not Hi, kinda, audience. Hi. Not necessarily. I don't think Navi will change. Hello, finger. I want one of those. Can you go get me one? Yeah, I'm be on, I'm gonna be on the next flight. Okay. Mm -hmm. Have fun. You need anything before you go? Yeah, for you to pay a ticket. Uh, no, that no. You already agreed to going, so. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> pay me a ticket. I'm off. Man. No, that's that no was problem. not that was not part of the uh, <laughs> that was not part of the deal here. He you said didn't okay. Ask was the deal. You just no, wanted you the finger. You said okay, so that means you pay for it. Mm, depends how you see it. Well, let's see if Navi decides to go for the same thing here. It looks like it, at least. Yeah, they're not changing. Uh, let's go then. So, same start. No, actually, left shot is changing position. No, they're going towards the hill. It does look like Navi's going yeah. for the hill now. Navi's going for the hill now, so they are changing. And up. they have a flanker. Indeed, Yanatolic, small gun, strike, small gun as well, strike, gets struck already, he's going to go down here at least towards the one shot, there we go, 145 HP remaining for him, Nesqui is playing the RT, but in the meantime, they've pushed back both Apowau and Dyer off the hill here, Anatolic is just pushing him, and left shot is behind him, like you said, Apowau is in trouble here, he's going to need some support, but they have to be careful because Artie is about to be reloaded, and if Nesqui can connect the shot now, it could be a game changer. Strike is on 140 HP and then Ooh, up walk go. goes down. And dead Amorek. But in this kind of game, losing a medium is a pretty tragic resource because having an RT does not help you when you're pressed hard. The flying's coming out here, Griffon and Server. They're coming behind, but there should still be enough guns. Rhino and Slide between themselves to deal with that. Griffon, he might be trying to peek here, but this is, this is not a fight they can take, honestly. This is something we've seen before. I would say almost identical to this kind of play. Ooh, Anatolic overextending. He goes Ooh. down. Big, big mistakes there from the Anatolic. But now Kriloid will come as well. And they know that the TVPs don't have enough shells to kill anymore. So the oh, Nesqui with the artillery shot from behind. Takes down Slide. And this is a game changer. We talked about RT. Rhino is now coming as well. They need to take down these TVPs quickly. Wow, Navi from being in a superior lead now, they actually have to fight for the light. And there is a there is a counter counter attack coming on a hill now. In the meantime, indeed, Tornado is pushing the hill. Left shot's coming from behind. He's clipping onto the nuclear in the 113. He needs two more to kill him. One more. But in the meantime, they lose in Spyro in the bad shot. And left shot doesn't connect it. He has one more, I think. There we go. He finally picks up nuclear. 4v4 here. But Surfer, he's still alive. He dodged both Kriloid and Inspire. But Kriloid's picking up here. He picks them up. 3v3. But there's an RDP here as well, and Rhinos and I is three at this point, which is vital. Dider has a dead driver, though near you is on low HP, and they have an RT. So this game, from something that looked really superior to Navi, is back to, let's say, even Steven. Tornado is almost 1k HP down, they're in offense, and they have an RT piece. Nesqui, if they win, Nesqui saved this game. That RT shot onto slide, I think it was 1.5. It was pretty much almost all of his HP. But. Still, Navi looks really firm here, although most of the HP comes from Rhino in, in uh, that ice 3 That's all they need. That's all they need, because potentially they can, he can one-shoot both near you or Nesqui, and certainly he can drag a lot of shells his way. Yeah, he, they need four to kill him, so one bad shot has to clip onto him, and now look at left shot. The confidence near you is going for the climb here. Will Rhino see it? There we go. Rhino gets spotted near you, decides not to go for it, because he knows Rhino would be able to get the shot. Of course, and now we have a really dramatic game. So RT is here standing more or less like Tank Destroyer trying to spot on its own because he knows there are no batches to support him. Near you, I think he's going to go for it again because he didn't get spotted when he peeked. So we'll have to see. There's the RT aim from Nesqui onto the bushes. And I'm not sure where you would think anybody would be there, but it's now re-aiming again. Left shot is here just in the bushes and like you said, Navi is by far in the superior position here, and especially because they have an IS-3. Especially also they're defending, so they are not pressed to do anything. And if anyone is good at playing slow and camping, well, Navi is the team. 
Ooh, left shot is here in a position that might be able to spot out near you if he does go for this. Near you is going to have to play it very, very careful. There we go. Near you is now crossing. Does he get spotted by left shot? Nope. Doesn't look like it. So, good start here for near you. And he will spot Rhino and Kreloid. He spotted both of them. He's going to peek out to try and shoot Kreloid here. Left shot gets spotted as well. Nice shot from near you. The first connects. The second connects also with left shot. He picks him up. Great shot there coming out from that bad shot. And now it's a 2v3. Left shot, yes, is low HP, but it's onto Dyrdor and Nesqui. Super lucky shot there by uh, left shot because he actually did a high roll and finished him off. The next one would he be his Bane. Yes, he has a dead Amorek now, but he still has three in his chamber, and I don't think he'll be doing any reloading. I don't think he's going to be reloading anytime. Nesqui got spotted. Can they pick him up before he gets into position? There he goes. He goes down towards Rhino. Great stuff here from Navi. And now it's all on to Diador. 3v1 on the attack. Not much he can do in this situation. Uh, seriously, did Navi just order high roll alphas when they need them in this part of the game? Like 390 alpha, Ice 3 doing 400 or RT instant, and uh, Bachat also doing 420 or 30. Well, the Gorilla was aiming as well. I don't think Nesqui would survive. I'm not so sure because I don't think he had an angle. He was behind the rock, man. It was only left shot who could shoot him. Well, then he should still die. But the alpha of Bachelot is 390. Like, you yeah, can do both, 320 both, with both, that. Both him and Rhino should realistically connect the shot, is what I'm trying to get at. But Dyador here making the rotation. Let's see if he gets spotted. No, this is good. I mean, not getting spotted is very, very important. I mean, there's a chance here. One, two. He needs three shots and then can make Rhino pretty much a three shot as well with five shots. There is of course a chance we've seen it also, <laughs> also especially on mines. And if he manages to deal with Rhino, it would be a really good start. Rhino has such a good position right now in that IS-3 behind the wreck as well. And Diodor, he can't really do much about it. He now needs to reposition. He only has four minutes and in a 1v3 time takes quickly. So four minutes left, he has a dead driver. Only thing he knows is where is the heavy Rhino's tank. closing him. And Navi, of course, doesn't want to let him go away unspotted. They're just trying to keep him as close there and maybe do some free shots while he's trying to move away. Dider is going to try and cross here. He takes a shot. Oh, he takes two shots even man. from the grill as well. And Rhino is even staying behind the house. And this is the point where Dider knows it's over. He's going to try and peek. Rhino, one more shot. Three, two, one. There we go. He picks it up. And four to four. Tiebreaker is going to be imminent. Two more rounds each. Seriously, what kind of bad karma did they... What did they do to deserve such bad karma in this game? So much bad luck here for uh, Tornado. But well, still, they were outplayed by Navi by far. Yep, and Nesqui almost saved that round. Almost. Keyword, almost. Well, we are still within boundary of predictions. <laughs> 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 I don't know, should we be happy or miserable about it? But still, the games are good and the wins of the teams are not some sloppy wins. They are well deserved. Indeed, and that was a quick round and Apple out there. That was a great counter from Navi. I mean, it was a great push on him and uh, you could see that it was pre-planned that they will deal with boosters. Levsha went to the little village because from the start. It's standard for people to go behind the rock to try yeah. and counter it now. Yeah, they went, went uh, with the Levsha in a village from the start. A lot of guys uh, someone put, pushed Applewow from the hill down, so he had to fall down. And uh, it was really just a good display of play from Navi. Good display of play. That's exactly what it was. And Server, really, he tried to get it with Grifon, I think it was, over there. But, you know, realistically, they should have died already, sliding, uh, sliding Kree Lloyd on the Grillius. If Nesky doesn't one-shot slide, they lose both of TVPs for free, and then Rhino doesn't have to relocate in his eyes. Three, yeah, it would be the, over. the hill push from Tornado never works ever, so it would be over, yeah. It was a huge fight there for Hill. Yeah, but if Rhino doesn't have to go help Kreloid, then there's an IS-3 constantly shooting, like pumping out 390 mm -hmm. Alpha, well, in his case, 400 plus every time. Well, we will see what will happen now, because we came from 4 to 1, 4 Tornado to 4 to 4, but before that, we're going to check out some stats. Yep, Rhino here in the TVP, pretty good. Slide then, as well. uh, Slide was playing Gorilla. Yeah, some of the stats are not there as they're supposed to be, so bear with us for a moment. Yeah, 
I vividly remember Slide playing uh, a Grillier. Yes. I think you do as well. Mm -hmm. You sure? Yes. <laughs> now, I forgot already what's the next map. Well, what's left here? Prohorovka is the uh, tiebreaker. Ghost Town next map. That's oh, going to be cool. interesting. I like I like to watch Ghost Town. Yeah, especially because I don't think either of these teams are going to play super passive. Because they know they can't. Oh, there you go. Kirilloid here, 3.5k damage done in that Grille. Nesqvi, 1.5k. That means that he did almost all damage in that one shot. Mm -hmm. How much did Slide take? I think it was about 1.1 on Slide. Because Slide took two TVP shots. Unless the second TVP shot just tracked him. Don't know. But Slide did like that one shot of damage and that's it. Yeah, poor him. I mean, not really poor him. Kind of poor him. Poor maybe for this game, but he's earning well enough. <laughs> yeah. And Strike, I mean, instantly got focused down in the beginning. He got tracked, he went down to a one shot. You don't expect much of a batch out with a small gun after that. Man, I really like this stage, actually. From one to ten, how much do you like it? Eight to nine. What stage is a nine to ten? Something with the uh, real tank and chicks. <sighs> Gotta appreciate the beauties of nature, man. Really? Yes. <laughs> uh, unbelievable. Well. Now, Ghost Town, it kind of depends who's defending for. Uh, does it really? Ghost Town is like highly brawl map. Uh, I would. I was actually looking forward to maybe see a uh, Ding play against uh, these guys on a Ghost Town. But we never came to it. Dyrdor seems upset. Yeah, it doesn't look good in that aspect. He seems... he's really upset. That's not good. No. Because he's supposed to coordinate the team together with Nesqui. Mm -hmm. Why do you think he's so upset? Maybe some plays, some of his uh, players are not on spot. Some of the commands not really given in. Well... Let's take a look at the lineups and hope he calms down in the meantime. Two Yihanas here for Tornado and surprised not to see any for Navi. Navi playing rather soft there in defense. They can't boost anymore. Climb. No, there is no boost, but boosts are... Yeah, you can go with 50B. No, they... they in defense. They patch that. Really? Even in defensive boost? Invisible walls. Oh, yes. Remember? Yeah. Uh, so Navi has... But still, this is so weak setup. Like, these E100s can shoot them up. Yeah, they can get on the cap. Well, let's find out who's going to win the next round on Ghost Town. Ghost Town. The first absolutely symmetrical map made especially for 7 versus 7 games. The teams start the battle on opposite sides. There are numerous ways to attack here. One of the bases is located in the central square, the other one at the top of the city. The hardest battles are usually fought for the top base, and this calls for the use of heavy tanks. Sometimes the teams choose fast tanks for spotting and base capturing. So, Navi versus Tornado, 4-4 four to four now, moving into our second to last map. Gonna see Ghost Town and what Dakin we see here, we prefer Tornado's pick with two E100s and a couple of clippers. And they even have a VZ, they can just flip into one cap if they decide in one moment. But they're playing at the moment much more conservative. Look at this trap here for the Anatolage. Is he gonna get caught by it? It does look like it. He gets spotted. I think he's dead, Mojo. Griffon and Near you will now peek out against him. I think the Anatolic is done for in this one. The Adora is doing some shots onto Rhino. And actually, no! Anatolic the Anatolic got away. away! They were slow! They were slow! No! Not like this! But Wh it's not only here and away. There is uh, reinforcements coming in. Why was he so slow? I really don't know. They were even uh, almost selling out the Adora there because they sent him alone well, on the other side. I think. Strike is now getting clipped from behind by near you. Two shots taken already. He'll get around the corner though. So he trades badly, but he stays alive. In the meantime, Yanatolic has also repositioned back. And this is good still from Navi. They are down HP, but obviously that's because of the more beefy lineup that Tornado brought to the fight here. 
Eplowau is annoying them a bit from the other side of the map. A, a bit, you say? Yeah, shooting 340 damage. Also, they know they cannot really freely position here because they can get shot in the back. Levshaw really has to take care what he does so he doesn't get connected in the back. He's going to get clipped by near you very soon here. Near you is pushing up already on the corner. GAG9, there we go. Near you picks out the first shot. Nuclear oh. the second. The damage taken by Levshaw is huge. 444 remaining and he is definitely in trouble. And this is great stuff here from Tornado. One more shot to finish him off. Perhaps Nuclear will make the peak, but I doubt it. I doubt that they're going to find it worth it. But Navi, they need to stop bleeding. They need to do some damage, Mojo. This is what we've been saying when we said that Navi has a bit soft setup compared to Tornado because Tornado can even risk some HP with those E100s flying around. But Niryu is taking some damage now and he lost the gunner. That will of course affect him shooting with that 50B. Yeah, it will definitely affect him. But now the flank's gone from the Anatolic and uh, from Strike. But there's Nesqui waiting there and Griffon is in the vicinity as well. Nesqui should be able to spot them out. Now he's trying to make some counterplay here, but uh, I think Niryu and Nesqui can really deal with them easily. Yeah, and Griffon's repositioning as well, so they have to be careful here. The Anatolic needs to not overextend. There's a lot of forces there from Tornado available to turn the gun. There we go, Kriller takes a shot, or a big one even from an E100. I think Server was the one. Again, bleeding even more. Tricky down, finally left shot goes down, Nuclear makes the peak. Picks them up, first time down for Navi. This is really interesting to think about, guys, because you can see always they're trying to throw off attention of a team, showing tanks on one side while they're actually doing a shot or two on another. And what Daki calls the bleeding is because there are no final blows. Most of the time you're trying to do that one or two shot and not get too greedy, because when you usually stay for some one more, you can use that extra much more HP than you're actually giving away by that. But this game was an even 100s, it looks super cool, man. Like, again, I have to repeat it. Yeah, probably one of the better cameras by now. Apoal has moved onto the capture circle, but Kriloid is going back already. Apoal is taking a very good position. He should be able to connect one shot. There we go, 482, Phew, nice big alpha. alpha. Nice alpha for 440 average gun there. Also good position. Uh, Applewow was left there in the back on a uh, P0, C0 from the start, and this was kind of an expected movement. As soon as they managed to push away Navi a bit, they will, he will go and pressure the cap now and look at the positions of Tornado. There is no way in. There is no way in for Navi. They shall not pass. Wherever they go, there's a gun, and there's a second gun waiting very nearby. They have a half moon circle around the Kapur Apowau, and this is going to be some cross... Oh, wait, you can still climb. Yes, on this part, that's why you confuse me. Because and I know the other part around the, you know, B7, I thought, I thought B8... I thought invisible wall here. Never no, mind. B7, B8, that's blocked off. Oh, so that's what's blocked off. Never mind then. I thought it was that that was blocked off. I was like, off. maybe I didn't see all the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> but now Anatolic here with Heat trying to penetrate up a while. Well, he hit the gun. That's why he reset it. Wow. He bounced everything, but he had the gun with one. Yeah, I, I don't know. I was confused. There was B7, B8 I was talking about. So, good from the Anatolic to make the climb there. Important. Still 3,000 advantage here for Tornado. And there is plenty of time left for them to close in and uh, chase them away. If they start to push Anatolic, will probably even be spotted and they can shoot him to smithereen. Well, I think uh, Tornado is going to go for the... Uh and circlement here, you can see how they're massing up Nesqui and who's the second tank with him? Griffon, I think. Yes, there we go. Are now making a surround of the Navi lineup and still the cap is on. So they need to reset an Apoau. I think he went behind a house. Apoau is doing his role in the cap. He's abandoning the cap actually now. Okay, so they're going for the push. No, they're going for the middle cap, actually. They've <laughs> decided to change it up. Great That's stuff. A cool play. Cool play, guys. Cool play, because you don't have to stick to something like uh, it's uh, the end of the world. They saw Navi rotate to try to deal with everything they have on one cap, so they're like, yeah, fine, bros. We're just going to put everything we have in yeah, the other have, cap. They have the dead squad of Nesqui and Griffon waiting for any flank and a big oh. shot there from the nuclear. 
minus 10 on N23 on Inspire, and this is just getting worse and worse for Navi. Yes, there's only 3k severing in them, but I don't think that their Tornado is going to let them get close without punishing them. No, this is a super good game so far for Tornado. They are really positioning well, playing well and smart, and uh, Navi will have to play beyond their normal abilities to win this one. Well, Inspire needs to reset right now. Here we go. 1-1-3. Server is his first target. He doesn't. 16 seconds left here because the flank is coming in from the rest and there's still no reset coming out. Inspire, he's trying to run because he knows he needs to get safe. He takes the second shot on the way out, but the gap is what the issue here. Six seconds, five seconds. It needs to be the reset right now. The Anatolic is coming in full speed to try and do it. One second left on the cap and it doesn't look. Yes, finally. There we go. Anatolic actually resets, but it's not enough as they're losing everywhere else. He did get the reset. But now the tanks from Navi are going to start falling. Anatolic does kill nuclear, but server up wow, come around the corner. Server finishes them off. Two tanks left standing. Great display from Tornado. The reset price was really steep. They lost almost every member of their team. I mean, it doesn't have to be a captain obvious to see that they were just running in blindly, trying desperately to reset. So the trap that Tornado set up and all the crossfire really came to effect because Navi. Once they pulled back, trying to play against the one cap, were caught pens down. Yes, indeed. And it had to be Anatolic to reset. And at that point, they were fully surrounded everywhere else. So even if he got the reset, he could go back on the cap. They wanted so they now have two guys back on the cap. Rhino is spotted. He can't go anywhere. Nesqui from the front, died or from the back. One more shot. There we go. Nesqui picks it up. Five to four, Mojo. And now Navi needs to win the next two, <laughs> two rounds. <laughs> yeah, now he has to win next, <laughs> next three. Two, three rounds for our predictions to be right, which is possible because this is Ghost Town, and Ghost Town is slightly advantageous to attacker because you can actually just dominate the, the game uh, tempo by that much by positioning your tanks. And if you good, do a good tactics from the start and decisive enough, you can just throw around defender like Tornado did throw around Navi this this game. Very surprising for Navi to pick such a light lineup. I really don't understand it. It reminds me of something like Whoops would play, but Whoops was always shredded when they would meet even hundreds. Yeah, I don't know. It's very light. It took a lot of damage. Left Shah was left alone at one point, which did cost them as well. So, I don't know, all around. Just fighting one-on-one, on one, they looked so inferior. And they tried some rotations, but every time they were spotted, so they had to cancel it because they knew they were getting in traps. Yeah, just look at it. The 50 bees here near you died or in nuclear. Pretty much taking the round on the back and carrying it. Well, even Applewell did a decent damage in that visa tier 9. All, also Lev Shah for Navi, but Lev Shah is actually one of the guys to first die. Yeah. He was the first time dead. So, like, okay, nice damage, but still, bad position. Well, I still think Navi will pick up the second round, so that's yeah. that. It's pretty much very possible. But I feel like it's going to be another tiebreaker between these two. <laughs> Can you feel it? Yeah, I kind of have a scary feeling. <laughs> uh, I think it will be. I think it will be for sure. Triloid there, 471. I mean, all in all, just great rotations from Tornado, poke in the one cap, poke in the other cap. It's perfect, it's how it's supposed to be. I'm holding the game from the start because they didn't rush in anywhere. They made uh, certain traps from the start, playing with that VZ far away, with Diodor far away, trying to lure the budgets in rotation. When it didn't work out, playing really positional with the tanks, just using the higher firepower of their tanks. See Anatolic here on the screen, talking about the next round on Ghost Town. I would love to lip read at this point. Well, at least Inspeak would do. I still wouldn't understand. I could translate, no problem. Mm, okay, so let's take a look at the lineups for the next round, Mojo, here on Ghost Town. Again! No E100 sent Tornado with an EMX 30, and I hate it. I hate it. Seriously, I really don't like the defense also because... We Unless see, they go aggressive with it and just use it as a bait. We've multiple times when, when you boost the tank and you rely too much on it, you actually do get killed. Well, you can use it as a bait. You can, but that's inferior fighting tank. Yeah. So I don't like it. We're going to have to find out this double WZ that kind of looks like a cap rush, the Wild Bunch tactics incorporated. Yeah. 
WVZ and 113, it looks like straightforward <laughs> cap. <laughs> uh, Mr. Maybe Kala, they were watching you. Mr. Kala is now on the stream. Hey, they're doing my tactic. Oh, he must be so proud. Yes. If probably. they do that. Like if they. they. If they do that, yeah. But they could still do that with even 100. Well, very few seconds left before we actually realize for ourselves what do they plan. But Tornado completely shifting to light setup, almost like Navi did in their defense. And I don't know. Uh, honestly, I really like how Ding plays uh, Ghost Town. And I think it's better than this. Yeah, they're not going straight for the cap here. You can see they're just sending strike for now. Near you and the AMX 30 is going to go do the climb. So there's that. Strike will spot out Nesqui at least. No. So Nesqui is in a little bit of a trap there in the tier 9 bachelor. We've seen it before. Nice climb there by near you. Triple they cap are going for a cap, but not the outer cap as expected. And Navi, actually, uh, Tornado didn't see it coming. Nesqui takes already a shot running away there. Two shots even. Nice shooting there from Strike. And he loses his commander as well. That's annoying. And now the rotation's coming out. They're trying to go for it. Tornado, but they're driving into Slide and Rhino. But Slide takes the first volley here. But they should be able to hold him at least. And the rest of the tanks should be coming into support. Apoa is the first focus here. Rhino and Slide need to hold on. But they're getting flanked as well by Griffon. Slide's the first focus for Griffon. He should be able to pick him up. He has one more available. He will pick up Slide. But is it enough? Be doubted sincerely. Tornado's HP is like an equalizer, while Navi's is a bit more steady. But still, the gun in the game is important. It's equaled now when Snesco is dead in his budget. Griffon is getting pretty much pressured. Yeah, but in the meantime, they've already lost Kree Lloyd, and now Lesha has gotten, gotten tracked as well. He's gotten double tracked even at this point, and he is down to 252 HP. Griffon jumps off the edge. Tyler is going down here towards Rhino. Navi still a little bit in control, but the HP is very even. Only a few hundred separating the two, and now it depends who plays it out better. But the thing is, Mojo, we talked about it. The Amex 30, he still has full HP. Yeah, and that's not the best thing to play this game. Uh, in this kind of lineup, you want one of the Clippers to have any HP or any kind of position to shoot at the enemy. Left shot here should be able to connect at least one shot against Near You as Near You comes around the corner to pick him up. He should be able to do it. There we go. The first kill for the AMX 30 HP still very even here. Server takes another big shot. Rhino's coming from behind. He will finish him off now. Ooh, he misses on Inspire, who was a one shot. That could have been crucial at this point. Rhino picks him up. 4v4 here. Navi in the lead. Navi is actually in a really decent lead at the moment. Although uh, Tornado is defending and they just uh, took out one gun, uh, Strike is on full HP. Yes, yeah, Strike is going to cash in. And now Near You is pushing forwards, though, but he's pushing against near uh, <laughs> against Rhino. Rhino peeks around the corner, makes it, doesn't connect the second shot. The Anatolic picks up nuclear, though. But Near You in a good position. He look at the turret of the MX30, not that strong, gets penetrated by Strike, and that's the weakness of the MX30. Yes, he gets two kills, but he's losing so much HP so quickly. And Apple is on his back! He's done it again! No! Apple Wow! Pow, pow, pow! No! Yo, they're gonna yeah, push him they're gonna down. flip him! Strike! He's going for the tumble! He's gonna flip over! Oh. There goes Apple Wow! <laughs> on his roof he goes! What a play from Strike! <laughs> <laughs> now New Year's being clipped, and they should let him die. They should let him on his roof. Don't kill him. Anatoly speaks out. Do not kill Apoel. No strike. No, let him die. He's going to... Yes, there we go. Strike's going to let him die. He's oh, on his roof. Apoel does it again. A few more seconds before he dies, and he's in the same situation once. He's on his roof. <laughs> oh, strike. And... The <laughs> <laughs> up is down, Mojo. Up is oh, down. Little what a play. What a play. <laughs> oh, little kid extends upside down.